Welcome to our video on Smart Materials. This video is suitable for GCSE students. By the end of this video lesson, you should be able to explain what is meant by the term Smart Material. You should also be able to explain the properties and uses of Smart Materials, including thermochromic pigments, photochromic pigments, polymer gels, shape memory alloys, and shape memory polymers. So let's start with the definition of a smart material. Smart materials are a range of substances whose properties change with a change in their surroundings. For example, their properties may change when there's a change in temperature, when there's a change in the intensity of light, when the pH changes, etc. The first type of smart material we're going to look at is thermochromic pigments. Now, thermochromic materials change colour with changes in temperature. And some of the earliest examples of this were cobalt 2 chloride paints that were pink when you put them on a surface and then changed to blue when you heat them up. More recently, organic molecules have been used as thermochromic materials. And these change colour over a specific temperature range. There are a number of uses associated with thermochromic pigments. For example, they can be found in t-shirts that change colour when you do exercise and when the body gets hotter. They can be found in coffee mugs that change colour when you put hot water in them. They can be found in baby spoons that change colour when the food is too hot for the baby. So there's lots of practical applications. So now let's look at a thermochromic pigment in action. The following mug is black in colour but it contains a thermochromic pigment that changes colour with changes in temperature. So when I put hot water into the mug, the mug slowly starts to change colour. So it's black when the mug is cold, but as soon as hot water is in it, it starts to change colour. And this could be used to know when the mug is safe to pick up and not too hot. Now here's another example of where we could use thermochromic pigments. The following ducks all are made out of a thermochromic material and they change colour with changes in temperature. So we could use these thermochromic ducks to test the bath water for a baby or a toddler to check that the water's not too hot because if the water's too hot, the ducks change colour. So this is just another example of where we can use thermochromic materials in everyday life. Now the second type of smart material we're going to look at is photochromic materials. Now photochromic pigments or photochromic materials change colour with changes in light intensity. And these materials have a number of uses. For example, they're used as security markers. Uh, a security marker contains a photochromic pigment. And if you write on an item, you can't see it in visible light. But if you change the light intensity, and you have UV light, you can suddenly see the writing um, on the item. And a second use of this would be transition lenses. These lenses in glasses change colour in different amounts of light intensity, so they could darken if you wore them in bright UV light. Now our next smart material that we're going to look at are called shape memory alloys. Now an alloy is a mixture of metals. And a shape memory alloy is a material that regains its original shape when you heat it. So you could bend or twist this alloy when it's cool, but when you heat it up, it would regain its original shape. Now, nitinol is an example of a shape memory alloy. Nitinol is an alloy consisting of nickel and titanium, and you will find nitinol in spectacle frames, because if you bend the frames accidentally, all you have to do is just place them in a bowl of hot water and then they will regain their original shape. So now let's see nitinol in action. So I'm gonna take a nitinol wire and all I'm gonna do is put it in hot water. 
And as soon as I put in hot water, it will start to regain its original shape. Now it looks like an ordinary piece of wire, but the actual original shape of this wire spelt the word hot. And as soon as I put in hot water, there it is. It's regained its original shape. So other uses of shape memory alloys include thermostats for electrical devices such as coffee pots and in the case of a coffee pot this works because when the coffee pot gets to a certain temperature the nitinol that's in the circuit regains its original shape it breaks the circuit and switches off the coffee pot they can also be used as triggers for sprinklers in the case of a fire and they can also be used in the joining of bone fractures Polymers are also being used in many smart materials and the two types of smart polymers you need to be aware of are shape memory polymers and polymer gels, specifically hydrogels. So let's first look at shape memory polymers. So very much like shape memory alloys, these materials regain their original shape on heating. These are already having a number of applications. For example, companies are making car bodies from shape memory polymers. And if a car then has a dent in it, you can heat up the shape memory polymer and it regains its original shape, getting rid of the dent. Another use of shape memory polymers is in medical sutures. And these sutures or stitches automatically adjust to the correct tension because of body temperature. An advantage of these materials is that they're biodegradable and therefore they don't have to be removed. The following picture shows the medical sutures changing their shape, going back to their original shape, when they're warmed and therefore achieving the correct tension needed. The second type of smart polymers that we're going to look at are polymer gels and an example of these are hydrogels. Now these are cross-linked polymers that have the ability to absorb or expel liquid when subjected to certain conditions. So for example, temperature changes, pH changes, a change in the amount of salt concentration, etc. And in the case of hydrogels, the liquid they're absorbing or expelling would be water. These gels have a structure which allow them to absorb liquid and swell up often to a thousand times in volume. And the amount of swelling or shrinking that takes place is dependent on factors such as temperature, pH, etc. Now, hydrogels have a number of uses and they can be found in disposable nappies. They can be found in artificial muscles. They can be used to absorb toxic chemicals. They can be involved in drug delivery, robotic arms and firefighting. So now let's look at how polymer gels and hydrogels work. The reason they work is because they have an open structure. So the polymer is cross-linked and this means that liquid molecules such as water molecules can get trapped in their structure and this allows the polymer to swell. Now the structures of these polymers change in different conditions. So that means that a change in temperature or a change in pH or a change in salt concentration will mean that the polymer can either absorb or expel a liquid. Now if you were using this in a nappy we would want it to be able to absorb the water. If you were using it in firefighting you would want it to suddenly change its structure to expel the water. These materials are incredible. Sodium polyacrylate, which is found in nappies, can absorb from 800 to 1,000 times its weight in water. Being able to absorb large quantities of liquid or being able to expel large quantities of liquids, depending on the temperature or the pH or the conditions, means it has applications in drug delivery 
where you might be able to control the amount of a drug being released into the body if you know that the certain conditions, the temperature, the pH, etc. It also has the ability to absorb toxic chemicals and they're also using them now in artificial muscles. If you'd like to learn more about smart polymers, I recommend you check out these two videos. The first is from the University of Rochester, which looks at shape memory polymers and their potential use in medical sutures. And the second is from MIT, and it looks at hydrogels being used in artificial muscles. So now let's test your understanding of smart materials by having a go at a few exam questions. So we want you to have a look at the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then I'm gonna go through the solutions. So here's the first question. We want you to pause the video. The first part of this question is asking you to name the type of smart material used in nappies. The second part is asking you to state how this smart material is able to absorb such a large amount of water in terms of its structure. The third part is asking you to give another use of this type of smart material. And the last part is asking you to state the property of shape memory allies that makes them more suitable for making spectacle frames than traditional materials. Pause the video and have a go at the question. Now let's go through the answers to question one. The name of the smart material used in nappies is hydrogels. In terms of its structure, the reason it's able to absorb such a large amount of water is due to the fact that it's got strong crosslinks, which create an open structure. Now this means it's got gaps or holes in the structure which can hold water. So if you said either, that would get you the mark. Other uses you could say would be things like artificial muscles, absorbers of toxic chemicals, etc. And in terms of shape memory alloys, the property that it has, which makes some suitable spectacle frames, would be its ability to regain its original shape on heating. So now pause the video and have a go at question two. Here's the first part of question two. So we want you to name the two metals present in nitinol, and then we want you to look at the diagrams and suggest which one best represents nitinol. Now here's the second part of question two. We want you to pause the video and have a go at it. So we're asking you to give one use of nitinol. Then we're asking you to state the special property that nitinol has compared with other alloys or metals. And then for the last part of the question, we're asking you for the unusual property that photochromic materials have. And then to give an example of such material in everyday use. So here are the answers to question two. So the two metals present in this alloy are nickel and titanium. And diagram E best represents nitinol because nitinol is a solid and it's a mixture. So that's why it's diagram E is representing the particles in a solid and you can see that it's a mixture of two different atoms present. For part three, one use of nitinol could be spectacle frames or coffee pot thermostats. The special property that nitinol has compared with other alloys or metals is its ability to regain its original shape on heating. Photochromic materials are able to change color with changes in light intensity. And examples of these materials in everyday use would be security markers, transition lenses, etc. Now, all that's remaining for us to do is to recap the lesson objectives to check you've understood every aspect of this video. So you should now be able to explain what is meant by the term smart material. You should also be able to explain the properties and uses of thermochromic pigments, photochromic pigments, polymer gels, shape memory alloys, and shape memory polymers. So that concludes our video. Please check out our YouTube channel 
Dr Rowe Chemistry, and our Twitter site, which contains lots of chemistry information and links, at Radar Chemistry. <laughs>